Hello, my name is Mariana and today this is a reading for the collective because today it's the full moon eclipse, the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Um, so yeah, there's so much going on and this reading in particular was so odd but also so interestingly rich in terms of teaching me things about the way that I read the cards. Typically, I hear things and I see with my third eye images of things that are like metaphors or analogies for the message to be passed on. But today, I didn't hear anything from any card and they came one after the other so seamlessly, so just flowing in such a gentle way, almost as if like each card was a scene in a movie and I was just sitting there observing and allowing it to be absorbed by my perception, right? My, by my senses, but with no clear auditory type of stimulus or uh, any, any image in particular. That's the interesting thing. It's almost like it was the continuation. That's the, the fluidity of this reading for the collective for this um, eclipse. So... Because it's a collective reading, I'm using my big combined deck of tarot cards and astrological oracle cards. But at least here right now, there are only tarot cards. Um, but as I said, there is like this beautiful, seamless type of continuity between each card. And that's the reason why the way that I'm seeing this, it's almost like it's one big scene, right? And it's a beautiful celebratory type of scene one that is you enjoying being with yourself. It's like you're fulfilled. It's like this ultimate fulfillment, which is very odd for an eclipse, especially being in Scorpio, which is such an intense and powerful and deep energy that invites us to go within, right? So it can be very tense also. Um, but the message here is not talking about density or tension or challenges. It's actually just like, positivity and you know what might be the potential challenge it's so very well encapsulated and reserved where it needs to be that it's not permeating the rest of the reading right it's like the energy in this reading is very very positive is very uplifting and it's beautiful because it's like the exchange between you being fulfilled with yourself and able to give the best of who you are to those that you love to those that you want to share this path with so we're beginning with this celebration, the Four of Wands. So yes, this is coming through with that typical imagery of a celebration, right? It almost started as in like, this is the moment to celebrate. This is the moment to uh, be cheerful. It's like cheer up, right? It's almost what this wants to talk about. And it's interesting because I was... Um, just working with uh, a few herbs and uh, plants over there on my desk. Um, and, you know, I often say that um, the symbol for the wand suit uh, usually remembers uh, a tree or um, some sort of plant, right? It's very organic. So it is talking about like this uh, floral arrangement for some reason wants to be like very um, associated with the beauty or the perfume of the flower. So the celebration could be you with others as, you know, typically this card talks about, you know, the union and, you know, a wedding or anything like that. But it's like, this is, well, to me also the fours are all about stability and um, just holding your ground, right? Holding steady. Um, but this is like you surrounding yourself with beauty and feeling grateful for that. It's like that's the reason for you to celebrate because you're more stable than ever. And actually, it's not st it's, it's not stability in terms of stagnancy because of the six of wands that is coming next. It wants to keep on growing. The sensation that I had with these two cards, it was like this beginning of the movement. It starts with this scene, but the same scene 
expands and be begins like um it's like this dynamic expansion right just like you know an organism grows right from one cell to multiple cells and it's like it's like that it's like seeing you know one flower starting to bloom and then the entire place is all filled up with beautiful blooming flowers you see what i mean so it's like the reason for the celebration might be something very simple also this is talking about simplicity because the fours talk about simplifying to me but it's like you don't need to be stagnant you don't need to be still you can move you it's almost like you can dance you can move around it's like you're moving with the beauty around you right and this card afterwards was just emphasizing the movement. I was just stunned because I was just one. It's like my intention literally was to stand up and flow because I didn't want to keep, you know, set down. I just wanted to move, especially this chariot being like, it's the, the message that was coming through this card specifically because it starts here with something very beautiful that, um, invites you to celebrate and then expands and then it just it blooms right it blooms with beauty and just it's wanting to emphasize also the perfume of the flowers so it's like the reason to celebrate might be invisible but you can sense you can smell the perfume and that moves you and it moves you in a pace that is very tranquil that is very harmonious the six also brings this harmony so it's a harmonious flow a harmonious movement that it's not it's like it's you it's like you taking care of your stuff right um taking the wheel right standing on the on the driver's seat um sitting on the driver's seat that's the thing it's like you don't want to be sat down <laughs> as i don't want i just i did i wish i could do this reading standing up or moving around and you know walk in nature <laughs> maybe one day um so that's the thing it's like you don't want to sit down on the driver's seat but if you could drive you know standing up and walking and moving but that's i feel like you can right you can because that might be you know some sort of dream of yours right it's like drive your life right metaphorically now speaking drive your life knowing that there are many reasons to celebrate they might be very simple but they are enough to make you stand up and want to drive your life to a certain point of fulfillment right of it's like you're directing yourself as we are collectively to something that is very fulfilling with the nine of cups it's something that maybe we wished for that we individually and personally wanted for ourselves especially because the nines to me talk about the individual path so it's like each individual as part of a bigger collective driving their own lives to their own fulfillment and how this own fulfillment is victorious and you know um like a reason for a great celebration not not only just for you but for the whole because here we have now the shared path it's so gorgeous this lineup of energy because it starts here it's like you you taking care of your life you directing your own life and driving your own car in a sense right the car being the metaphor for the vehicle right your vessel your human vehicle is your car so the moment that you enter this car or that you it's wanting to be uh connected to like how incorporated or how embedded you are how embodied you are in your own self right so it's like owning this driver's seat responsibility and uh it's like ability to decide where to go and because the decision will always tend to go to what is fulfilling what is going to feel like um something very like a celebration like a big celebration right so if you allow your wildest dreams or your biggest desires to lead you to where you need to go it's like it will be in a pace that you'll 
you'll be able to smell the flowers, you'll be able to move in a very harmonious pace, but also it's like you're going to meet those or, you know, you're going to realize that the ones that enrich your life are already there, but now you see their value. The Ten of Pentacles is talking about the value that is there, that is there already or is where you feel most fulfilled. So it's talking about the realization of self, right? When you fulfill your own dreams, it's like you can show up to to others, to your relationships, identifying and recognizing the value that the other has in your life, but also how much value you are bringing to this meeting, to this encounter, to share this part of the path, right? So whomever you are sharing this journey with, or whomever you are going to share in the future, if you come from a place of, you know, self uh, fulfillment, like finding self satisfaction, you're always going to be led to the most enriching relationships, to the ones that are going to be like valuable to you, right? And so here is where this reading, you know, until this point, I was just like stunned because it was like, okay, so good news after good news after good news. This is incredible. I mean, there's got to be something, right? Like life has challenges. It's not just, you know, rose uh, color glasses type of life, right? Um, although it wants to point to the good stuff, right? It wants to point to the positive side, to the reason to celebrate, right? The It's almost like stability will come when you realize that there are reasons to celebrate. There are reasons to feel like you have succeeded right? With the six of wands, especially that you are moving forward. Okay. So there's something else here with the chariot. Most of the time, especially, okay. So let me talk about this seven of uh, swords before I go back to this. So the seven of swords here is talking about some sort of challenge or a splinter or, you know, um, uh, what is the name? Um, like a pebble on your shoe, right? Um, it's like some sort of obstacle that was identified, that was perceived, that was seen, but now it's encapsulated. So it's not bothering you. It's not a pain in the ass. It's not something that is, um, uh, it's provoking you, right? It's no longer a trigger. It has been identified and it has been sealed in a sense. And so the reason why I was uh, going back to this chariot was because this was talking about progressing forward despite you feeling it's like you don't need to feel overwhelmed to feel like you are progressing and you don't need to stay here right it's like the stability the beauty is in this stability but you don't need to be still to be stable i hope that makes sense you don't need to be still to be stable you can move you can keep on progressing forward. You keep, uh, you can keep on um, moving ahead, right? And this was perhaps, it's like you were always progressing. We as humanity, we were always progressing, right? As a collective. But there were still splinters that were perhaps um, just distracting us or causing pain and difficulty and um what i'm hearing right now although i said that i didn't hear anything but right now i just heard unnecessary distraction so i feel like but now because it's been sealed because it's been identified it's no longer something that um interferes right it's no longer something that is um it's like it's not going to change the course right but it's important that this is the way to go, right? If you go in the direction of your desires, right? If humanity goes in the direction of this, and it's interesting also something that I'm um, picking up with this nine of cups, this is not talking about the ego, like uh, very mundane, maybe, you know, uh, sexual desires, right? Or, you know, these very primal desires. This is not what the nine of wands, the nine of cups, 
wants to talk about. Maybe if it was the nine of wands, it could have have it could have had the fiery aspect, but because it's the water nature, right? The watery aspect of this nine of cups is talking about the most profound sensitive desires, right? It's like the intuitive desires, the Perhaps we're talking about like spiritual desires, right? Or spiritual wishes, like those deepest wishes that we have, like we all have, right? So if we move in the direction of those deep wishes, then we are going to perceive the progress. And because we know that what what was... Um, preventing us to feel the progress, right? It's not that the progress was not happening. There was nothing like that. Progress was still going, right? Going forward and moving forward. But the perception is what changes because the realization that there is reason to celebrate is now perceived as something beautiful and something to... Um, it's like uh, highlighting the fact that, yes, do celebrate. Yes, do smell the flowers. Yes, surround yourself with even more beauty. Flow through beauty. See beauty. Allow it to show you how things can flow in a much more harmonious way, in a much more fulfilling way with the Nine of Cups, right? So there is no need for this to be hard. Now this part is sealed, right? And here with this Ace of Pentacles ending this part of the reading, this was talking about a gift, but it's a gift that it's almost like the, it's like this is where this one big scene ends because it's like there is, it's interesting because um, what I was going to say about this Seven of Swords was that there is no enemy, there is no um, antagonist and the presence of a certain antagonist or, uh, you know, uh, like a counterforce to the protagonist, right, uh, has been coming up so much in the recent uh, readings. And it's interesting because here it wants to, it's like, that's been taken care of. That's not something that we as collective need to think about anymore. It's not a distraction anymore. We don't have to think about it anymore. It's been dealt with. It's now concealed it's now encapsulated so it's not going to be a splinter or an obstacle right and so here comes the next scene which feels like a surprise this was actually showing me as um like a box right like a, a real box right for a gift like you need to open the box to see what is the gift so it's like what is there to come right it's a surprise but it feels like it's a good surprise right it's something that maybe we as a collective you know we have been waiting for this wishing for this desiring that you know one day maybe this would come or this would um, materialize I was going to say like hopefully this would materialize but here it is right it's like I feel like this is um, the manifestation of a gift of a present like an actual present like an actual box that is bringing something inside that is going to be very valuable right didn't i say that yeah i did say that about the ten of pentacles so it's interesting also because we have you know the ten which is the ending of you know the the minor arcana journey um before the core cards and then we have following that a new beginning with the ace of pentacles so it's like realizing that the relationships that you have and that you are surrounded by are incredibly invaluable to you, are incredibly enriching to you, not just in a personal level for, you know, both of you or for all of you, but as a collective, right? It wants to point out the fact that this is the shared path. Also because we have 10 pentacles and here we have one. So Again, this notion of the individual, but also the collective, the collective and the individual. So it's like that, right? It's like that expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction. So maybe feeling like you're part of the whole and then realizing that you're unique, but also in the different uniqueness that is all around. It's like you make, you know, we make a whole that is so enriching, right? That is so diverse, perhaps. 
and that is not um, compromised by this splinter, by whatever this was that was preventing us from feeling all of this, from feeling good, from feeling hopeful, from believing that this present would come, right? That this gift, that this time, that this new beginning would materialize, would manifest. So I feel like the, it ends here, right? With this box. And it's almost like I cannot open the box right now. Maybe it will be opened in the extended. So we'll see. I am going to pull more cards for this collective reading as well as the Eswatch for runes um, in the extended. So if you want to join me there, I'll be very happy to see. You can find the link down below. If not, I'll see you next time. And enjoy this eclipse. Okay, bye.